Good morning. Welcome to all, especially guests and visitors. Very glad that you could be with us. It's true that we never stop learning. That's ultimately true in our normal lives, but that's even more true in our spiritual lives. We have a guest preacher today, Pastor Randy Hughes, the pastor of student life down at KML, and he's going to remind us of the importance of, of remaining rooted in our Lord and in his word. May God bless our time gathered together. We begin our service as we meet with God. We worship today in the name of God the Father, who created us and who sustains us by his grace. We worship today in the name of God the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who redeemed us by his perfect life and innocent death. And we worship today in the name of God the Holy Spirit, the Comforter who brings us to faith and renews us daily by his word. Amen. Our opening hymn. Our psalm of the day, Psalm 78. Give ear, O my people, to my instruction. I will open my mouth to share a lesson. I will speak about puzzling problems from long ago. We will not hide them from their descendants. He set up testimony for Jacob. In Israel, he established the law. Then the next generation would know it, even the children not yet born. Then they would put their confidence in God, and they would not forget the deeds of God. We join together and confess our sins to God. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and repentant sinner, confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I am distressed by the sins that trouble me, and am deeply sorry for them. 
Christian friends, Jesus says to his people, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. His death paid for the guilt of your sins and the sins of the whole world. Rejoice and be thankful that these words are forever true. All your sins are forgiven. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, you govern all things in heaven and on earth. In your mercy, hear our prayers and grant us your peace all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. If you're a gardener, you know it's vital for your plants to have solid roots. In order for a plant or a tree to be productive and grow, it needs a strong root system. In our first lesson, Jeremiah warns against putting confidence in weak roots while pointing to the root and branch, which will rule God's people. And in our second lesson, Paul encourages believers to be rooted in Christ. And in our gospel lesson, we see the branch teaching his disciples and having compassion on them. May we stay firmly rooted in our Savior's love and teachings all our days. The first lesson from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you. For the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them and they will no longer be afraid or terrified nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. This is the word of the Lord. In the second lesson from the book of Colossians, chapter 2. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. This is the word of the Lord. From Isaiah 55. Alleluia, alleluia. My word will not return to me empty but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our lesson is Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving leaving, recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them 
because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. This is the gospel of our Lord. By your team. For our hymn of the day. members in Christ Jesus, our Savior. The process of receiving or giving systematic instruction. It's the definition for education. There's a variety of ways and many different platforms scattered around the world that work hard to educate the uneducated. There is no greater educational need and no greater solution to that need than that which is found at the foot of our Savior. As Jesus said, let the little children come unto me and forbid them not. This year, our theme for Kettle Moraine Lutheran High School We go. Our theme for Kettle Moraine and Lutheran High School is found on the right hand side, rooted, rooted in Christ. What a wonderful way of thinking of the connection that we have between our Lord and Savior. And the theme for this morning is faith is all rudimentary. It's not a misspelling, it's of course a play on words from what we usually would think of rudimentary something that is fundamental, something that has its basis at the very foundation. When we talk about the rudimentary connections that we have with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it really is talking about that root system from which we draw our strength. Our, <clears throat> our reading for this morning is taken from John 15, 1 through 8. I am the vine... And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does not bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. At the very root of this reading, Jesus is telling us to stay connected to our source. And that picture on the side with all of the grapes is a reminder of the picture that Jesus is sharing with his disciples. His disciples knew very well the picture. They grew up in an agrarian community. They grew up in an area where these vines were very precious. They grew up understanding that from the vines themselves were the offshoot of the branches and finally the fruit itself. Jesus shares this story with his disciples It may have been while they were in the upper room on Monday, Thursday. It may have been at a time where Jesus was trying to remind his disciples of what laid ahead. Because what laid ahead for each of them was found in these words of both encouragement and of warning. He knew that on that fateful night when he was going to be betrayed into the hand of the Jews to take his life, he knew that there would be 11 disciples who would scatter. He knew that those 11 disciples were going to be faced with many hardships. Questions about why they ever followed Jesus in the first place. Fear that perhaps they might be either imprisoned or killed themselves. And yet God knew he was going to use these 11 to carry on his ministry once he left this world. And so he encourages them to stay connected to the words that he had taught them during their years of discipleship. And it stood as a warning for especially that one individual by the name of Judas, reminding him that he was going to have a disconnect. He was going to be severed from the relationship of his Savior, Jesus, And Jesus knew that that severing ultimately would lead him down a path to taking his own life. And then, as the word of the Lord says, being found in the hands of Satan instead of connected to Christ. Strength and nutrients that come from both the root system and the foliage of the plant feeds the entire plant. Whether it be a grapevine, or whether it be a tree, God is reminding him of that important picture and connection. What is expected ultimately becomes inevitable. When you plant a good vine, and once it begins to grow, what is expected is that the branches will come forward and ultimately the fruit. It is inevitable that if you choose a good vine, which the disciples also understood, to choose a quality vine in your planting, that down the road you would benefit from the fruit. Jesus is reminding his disciples that There are many imposters. There are impersonators and there are vines of lesser stock that can be planted. But ultimately, he also says that those fruits, fruits from the lesser vines and the imposters, will be rejected by the vineyard caretaker, and that picture is God the Father. God the Father will reject the imposters and the impersonators and the fruit that come from those vines. But if you are connected to the one vine, 
the real vine, sometimes known as the parent vine, Jesus Christ, those fruits will be accepted by God the Father. Because God the Father has impeccable standards. His standards only require one thing, perfection. And he rejects all imperfection. The good news is those that are connected to Jesus Christ can only produce one type of fruit. And that is the perfect fruit of our Savior that is acceptable to God the Father, not because of what we do, but rather because of what Christ has already done for us. As Jesus reminds the disciples, he also reminds both you and me. He reminds us because the actions of betrayal ring loudly in the year 2021. And they have since the beginning of time. Judas isn't the only one who rejected his Savior. And so the warning stands for both you and me as well. And that warning hangs like a hangman's noose over our heads each and every day of our life. And it's that shadow as we see that noose swinging back and forth on the (coughs) wall of our life that reminds us that without Jesus' perfection, there is only one fate, and that's that of eternal damnation. And so Jesus steps in and reminds us of that important point. Stay connected to the vine. As long as you are a branch connected to the strength of your Savior, you will always be acceptable in the eyes of our Lord. The difference between the Judases of the world and between you and me is that Judas disconnected himself from Christ and no, we continue to betray our Lord and Savior. Even our best efforts as Christians are unacceptable unless they've been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Unless we are connected to the parent vine, our brother in Christ, The fruits of the harvest give recognition not to us, but rather to the parent plant, just as a sire is given credit for the foal. It's always that reminder that we can never look at ourselves and think, how good am I? But rather, how good and gracious is our Lord and Savior? And that fruit that we produce is evidence of our connection with our Savior Jesus Christ. Yet the parent plant offers more. The parent plant offers more to each of its branches. Sap. My neighbors and I in the area, usually in the fall, are able to plug a bunch of those maple trees and sap drains out from which we make maple syrup. Sap comes from The root system and the nutrients drawn from the soil even comes from the foliage that sends its nutrition downward. Sap is what keeps the tree alive. And that's really what God our Savior is saying about his relationship with us. He is that nutrient. He is the one who keeps us strong through word and through sacrament. Dead wood on trees robs a tree of its nutrients. Dead wood produces absolutely nothing that's worth harvesting. But most of the time you go through and you prune. Prune some of the extra foliage, you prune the dead, and it all goes on a pile, most likely to rot or to burn. As a kid, I grew up on an apple orchard We had about 500 trees. Always hated it when my dad said, it's time to prune the trees. It was a long process with 500 trees, but the neatest part about it was when it was finished, my dad gave me the fateful match and a little kerosene 
and we got to light all that garbage on fire and watch it burn. God's reminder is that those who are disconnected from him are going to turn into the, the wood. The dead wood that we throw onto the fire, which is the symbolic way of saying eternal damnation. And so God is that sap in our life that will continue to keep us strong. And Jesus is also resin. Some people misinterpret resin and sap. They think they're one and the same and they're not. Resin is that product that the tree sends to its area of the tree when it gets damaged or hurt. Whether it is cut or the bark has been peeled back and it sends this nutrient called resin to cover over the injury to try and keep out anything that might cause greater damage to the tree like insects or disease. And God our Savior is also sap. So many times when we have become wounded, when we have been hurt, when we go through the strife of life, God says, I will be that resin. I will be the one that gives you the balm and the healing, the support that you need, the comfort that is also necessary, and I will raise you up by being connected so that that vital connection remains intact. <clears throat> what a wonderful opportunity that we each have as Christians to know that not only does God want us to be connected, but he will make sure that we stay connected as long as we lean on our faith and on the understanding of Christ Jesus through his word. When outside agents, personal injuries, fears, and heartaches threaten to cause that disconnect, God promises to be with us side by side. And as most of us, of course, know, the year 2020 has provided many opportunities to become disconnected. For many, the fear of death is one of those things that took over their life and their thoughts. For some, Satan has used shelter in place and the forbidding of large group gatherings to move people further and further away from their church, but also from the spiritual nutrition that we constantly need each and every day. Violence, questionable ballot tabulations, anger and resentment towards political sentiments and the people who hold those sentiments have all made it very difficult at times, even for Christians, to produce acceptable fruits of faith to our Father. And yet, just like his sap, he continues to feed us. And just like resin, he continues to heal over the wounds. And so I'm going to return to the statement that I began this sermon with. There is no greater educational need and no greater solution than that which is found at the feet of our Savior. Each and every day, many of our grade schools, many of our high schools, and Kettle Moraine Lutheran High School have a chance to work with our teenagers to keep them connected to that source of strength, to remind them of the vital connection that they have since the day they were baptized through Jesus Christ, their Savior. And each and every day, God uses that word of God to continue to feed his lambs to keep that connection strong, the nutrients, the sap. And each and every day when they're wounded, they are reminded that their Savior is there for them to cover over the emotional, psychological, the physical, the wounds that they suffer. 
And yet that message is not just for teenagers. It's for all of us, even some of us, who are gathering a little gray on the sides. Because God says it doesn't matter what age you are, it is a timeless fact that we need to stay connected to the nutrients of his word and his sacraments. Colossians 2, 6 through 7 states, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. God has an expectation for each of us, and he also has a desire. The expectation is that we stay firmly rooted, that we continue to stay connected. His desire is that we produce fruits of faith that will be shared with all of the people who surround us. Because there are people who scratch their head and ask, why is it important to be a Christian? What makes a Christian different from anyone else? And by your fruits of faith and my fruits of faith, we should be known. People should be able to see our empathy and sympathy for the hurting community around us. They should be able to see the importance of God's word and forgiveness in our life. Should be able to see that we have a hope that does not fear death when it comes calling. If we have those we become those witnesses. Because Christian faith is rudimentary. It starts at the root system of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it is not about the believer. It is about Jesus Christ, the one to whom we are connected. Amen. We'll continue with our next verse of the hymn as found up on our board. We join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now let us pray to the God of all knowledge and wisdom that the church, the body of believers, may be renewed and strengthened for her mission. O Lord, you have revealed your good and gracious will to your people on earth. Forgive us for pursuing that knowledge that serves only our selfish desires and for using what we have learned to exploit and hurt others. Cleanse our guilty hearts of the apathy we feel for searching out the deeper truths of your word. Heavenly Father, send the Spirit of Jesus into our hearts, so that like the Bereans of old, we eagerly learn of you. As the deer pants for streams of water, may we be instilled with a longing to explore the mysteries of your grace. Holy Spirit, increase in us the knowledge of your truth. As you sent your Son among us as the Word made flesh, 
So bless the efforts of schools, colleges, and seminaries to train those who proclaim your presence among us in word and sacrament. God of light, get to the church renewed wisdom and fresh understanding that the message of your salvation may shine ever brighter in this dark age. Lord, we ask you to bless those in our congregation who have birthdays this week. Be with those couples who have anniversaries this week. And bless those who struggle in any way physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Bring them healing, help, and above all hope that in all things you are working for the good of your people. Holy Spirit, renew the face of the earth so that at the name of Jesus every knee may bow. And hear us, Lord, as we join to pray the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. God move us to value the blessing of our Kettle Marine Lutheran High School and all forms of Christian education as ministries where our young people come to know better their place in this world and their standing with you, their Savior. As one family of believers move us to glorify you in all we do, praise you for all your many and varied blessings to us, and to spread your message of salvation to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.